Hi there. For those interested in Dakota, which is an optimization tool that we can use to couple applications within those applications, we, we can couple open phone, whatever, and any application. Uh, let me show you first just the, the link where you can download it, but also how to install in OpenSUSE in the image that we're working in. So here you can go to the website, okay, and then download, and you can download the the source code so let's work with the latest version okay so go here and here you you have access to the source code so here you have the gui the graphical user interface is already pre-compiled so it's your work in linux or windows or whatever you want so in our case will be linux you can download and here you have the source codes also so you click there okay Let me go. So you have the source code. Okay, so land download this one. Okay, Unix, Unix, this one without the, the UI, UI. Okay, this is the user interface. We want this one. So I already download everything. And I have it here. Okay, so as you go, I created a, a, a folder called Dakota, and here I put everything. So see that I have the one, the GUI, the precompiled binaries, and then I have the source code. So just to show you, then you need to extract everything. So to extract, for instance, the one on seed, we need to unseat this one, okay. To see release, uh, okay, sorry, it should be unseat. Okay, we're extracting the one, the user interface, okay? Uh, we'll start, extract everything. And then we can also extract the other one, which is the source code, the one that we want to compile. So you just type like that. And so just here you have it again tar uh, minus exit vf and the name of the, of the file so now that you have this one we can compile so this one is already pre-compiled so as you go there you will see that you have this executable here so you you can run it as you want so i'm not going into details go to the documentation and it will show you how to use it it's a nice graphical user interface for those who likes to use a graphical interface Okay, so it will ask you to create a folder where put your workspace. So for instance, in my case, let me put this folder. Okay, let me put everything in my Dakota directory. Okay, so I will put everything there. And you will launch. Okay, so it will create this. GUI workspace, and then you have this one, uh, a nice interface, I'm not going into detail. So that is already pre-compiled, okay? But now we need to compile Dakota. So you have here all the source, key, source code. So let's go through the, the, uh, the compilation. So first, let's create a folder, and I will call it Dakota 6. 12. Okay, here we're going to put all the binary servicing compiled. And now we go here, six point inside this directory. So now we're ready to compile. To compile, we use ccmake. And then you do like this. You point now to the location where you have the source code. Okay. And voila. Okay, then you have this, you press C, okay, to configure, and it will start to do some con uh, configuration. At this point, it's telling you configuration failed, okay. And let's see what is failing. It's failing because you are missing some modules, okay, you need to set up everything. So see that it's telling you that you are feeling, uh, missing Fortran compiler. So you press exit, Okay, then Q, uh, Q without generating. And here we can cancel everything that it generates. Okay, you cancel everything, but now we need to install the Fortran compiler. So we, you can do it from the command line interface or you can do it using the graphical interface. I will use the graphical interface because we need to, to install a few more applications. 
Okay, so just to show you all the stops, just to understand when you try to compile the errors and how to catch those errors. Uh, let's say not, not errors, just missing libraries. Okay, so you just need to read your screen. So it will start. So we need Fortran. You type Fortran. So we installed previously, we installed GCC, but you, the C compiler, but we didn't install Fortran. So you need to install Fortran. Just select that one and pretty much we're ready to go. It will install Fortran, the free version. So it will download everything, it will install packages. And now well done. I press continue because later let's see if we get more errors. Now we can reinstall stuff, uh, install again stuff. So now let's launch again this command here cc make. Okay, c for co configure. Okay, let's see what's happened. It's configuring, but now it's telling me that we have another error. So see that it's telling you that now you are missing la pack la pack. Okay, so we need to install this library again. So quick, and now we go this. So this is a very important library, LA pack. Okay, so you go here, install the pack the, the developer. Okay, and what else? Yeah, we should have it there. So now you go apply, continue, we'll install all the libraries that you need for LA pack and we're done. So again, yeah, let's cancel whatever we have there and let's launch again, seek for configure and let's see what happens. So now it seems that it found LA pack. Okay. So it's starting to build all the scripts, everything. And now we have a couple of more errors here. Let's see eh, ta, ta, ta. Confirming errors are cured. So here is telling me that we are missing. Okay. Some boost libraries, I think. Dakota. Okay. Could not find boost. Okay. Missing this serialization. Okay. So this is specific library for boost. Uh, okay, so now those libraries, there are a few that you will need to install. Okay, so you already have some boost installed, but you need to install more. So here I have my list that I need to install boost uh, file system. So I go here, it is install file system, program actions, it's not installed. So first you, you, you will look here and you will find that somewhere here you have the serialization you have it here you always install you now the one called devil the where you have the source code so we have serialization uh was the other one was program actions and then reject okay that one also we need it we have it here and system boost system you have it here, okay. Let's build system, okay. And um, plus file system that we already have at the beginning, but let's see, if we are missing the developer one. Uh, okay, also missing developer. And at this point, we should be ready to go. I said da, 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 da. it's giving this warning, and it going is going to download those libraries, okay and put the, the source code in your installation. I want to remind you that we have this image, uh, 50 gigs image, but we're installing a lot of things. So you will, if you type DF, you will see that you were start, starting to run out of space. So you have like 40% of your 50 gigs to run simulation. So you can type DF minus SH, uh, minus H, sorry, and see that you have left 18 gigs okay for your simulation so be careful this is just is you have this restriction of space but then if you want to gain more space for instance is you know that you are not going to use a code to erase this folder in open fun is you know that you are not going to use the version 2006 erase those and you can reach like 40 percent of space okay so now that we are here again we go through this step okay erase everything and launch again cc make see configure and let's see what happens so now it's launching this script doing a lot of stuff and let's see hopefully we are not going to have any problem
Okay, since that is working fine. Configure. Okay, configure produce the following output. You have no errors, so configure done. So at this point, you exit this screen and we can go now to the to the personalization, let's say. So here you will have many options, but what is important here is that you need to give the location of where you want these executables to be put. So by default, it will put everything in the user library, which you need uh, the, root, uh, the root privilege. Here, we want to do it in the user level. Probably you can guess that I like to install things in my user directory when I compile like this. So you see that the only thing that you will need to change here is this prefix. So your prefix now will be here. We're installing in this directory. Okay, so we copy this. And we can paste this information there and see that I'm telling install in your user directory. You can install this whatever you want, but I recommend you just to put things in your user directory. So enter, we're done, and then you have many more options here. So you can see, okay, so you will have a stuff like if you want to run this one in parallel, whatever. So for the moment, I'm not going to set out that, okay, but it's up to you. See that you can go install some additional libraries, okay? So it's up to you to do the installation, okay? To, to choose your, your option. So uh, in this case, Python is not enabled, so you can enable that and you will have the Python support, in many sense. So see that you have you have many more additional libraries, okay? So you can add everything here, okay? So just feel free to look. Also, you have the documentation. You, you can get more information, okay? So you feel lost. Okay, so this is all, okay? So see here that at the end also you have this one, more stuff here. So for instance, you have this library, Slim Pack. Here you have the LA Pack. Okay, it's on by default, MPI off. Okay, stuff like that. So at this point, we're happy with this configuration. You press C and you are reconfiguring, reconfiguring everything. Remember that you change the location where you want the executable. After you do that one, we can generate this script. Okay, so you press G and it will generate the script that now you can use to compile. So now that you are here and see that what you are doing this one is creating files here, it's putting information, whatever. So now we can compile. So to compile, you just go make and we can do it in parallel, J4. And it will start to do the compilation. So luckily the compilation will go clean with no error. So let's see what happens. So what is compiling? Remember now you are compiling everything here in this directory and here you have your source code, your original one. Okay. And it's just executing these scripts and then putting everything here. Okay. So the SRC remains untouched. So this is kind of a safety measure to avoid just messing around with this one. But again, you have the, the source code. You, you can just go back to that source code. So at this point, let's wait. The compilation should be fast or fast in comparison to open phone, but it requires some time. So see you later when things are done. Okay, so in my size done the compilations, you see it went smooth. So the final step will be again make, but now install. So it will just copy the binaries in your current directory. And now you should have, let's finish here. So it's copying everything. See that's putting your binaries. So now as you go to directory, see that in lib, you have all the libraries and then in bin you have all the binaries, okay? So now you have everything. And as you might imagine, we will need to add this to our bash RC. So as you go to your home directory, remember that the bash RC is always located in your home directory. You go open that one and using Jedi, but you can use whatever you want. So open this one, I already put it here, NT, and just add it there. So I see that I have it now 
my installation is 6.612. Okay, so I have there my binaries, okay, for that. So let me check, is that installation Dakota 6.12? Okay, so I call it 6.12, Dakota 6.12. Okay, so I don't have the zero. This would be 12 as well. Okay, and I think also I need to add, okay, that will be enough. Okay, so we have that, the test, and now save and source. And as you type now that quarter minus B, you should get the version. So let's see, so it seems that it's not finding that one so let me do it. so it's install here dakota 612 let me open again the d bash rc um, home. okay so this one is cfd user so remember it have to be cfd user cfd user home cfd dakota dakota 612 Okay, that should be okay. We source that one. And if I go Dakota minus B, you should have that. So if you have this output, you are okay to go. So this is Dakota installation. And at this point, we have all uh, all the file, all the all the programs we need and just to remind yourself see that we're using 64 of the hard drive space so remember if you are using this image with 50 gigs be careful that probably if you start to run the, the tutorials it's not a problem but if you start to run your own cases our cases it's likely probably that you will run out of, of space so it's better to use a larger image so also we'll allow an image for 200 gigs Okay, but it's up to you to create your own image. So I think this is all for the moment. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye.